Okay, uh, so I think we're recording now. Uh, great to see you guys. And uh, my name is Eric Owens. I'm director of the International Studies Program. And I'm here with a number of our peer advisors this academic year to talk about the job of being a peer advisor and a program assistant in the IS program, uh, which is something that's open to all uh, juniors and seniors in the program who are interested in, in helping out. Um, I'm recording the session today for folks who aren't going to be with us. Um, and really, it's a super informal session. So um, I'll say a few words about things that I'm, you know, uh, about general feeling about the role and things like that. And then we'll take questions and uh, have uh, our current advisors offer some perspectives on it as well. Um, in the meantime, I also want to let you all know that you can check on uh, a list of our current advisors here that I put in the chat box, as well as a description of the um the the job application and and what it is that uh, we expect peer advisors to do uh in that job opening page um so uh, at the very beginning i'll just say that that peer advisors are super important to the is program uh we're not well funded overall by the university with a huge staff of people um and we're we're a little program with a lot of ambition about um how we build community in the program and the kinds of academic events and social events and community events that we do, career-related professional events, all of those require um, activity by, by our students, by our majors. Um, and we, we depend on that, um, both for mentoring to make people feel like they're included as part of the program, but also for the legwork that it takes to do those kinds of things. It takes lots of hours of preparation to plan events, whether it's trivia night or a lecture from a visiting scholar or um or uh you know conversations with faculty about a concentration or, or a career or whatever all this stuff takes a ton of time and our peer advisors are the ones who do the bulk of that work our peer advisors also build our weekly newsletter which all of our minors and majors and lots of other faculty and alumni receive as well uh, around 800 people i think receive the newsletter weekly and um that's our central source of information and a lot of work goes into producing that newsletter on MailChimp and getting it out on Monday midday uh, each week and. Um, uh, our peer advisors also divide up responsibilities for sort of special projects um, when we do this year we've divided up we've had a couple students working primarily on community building events. Uh, we've had uh, students working primarily on the newsletter we've had students working primarily on. Um, global conversations project and on um, uh, uh, on global citizenship issues and all sorts of things. So sometimes we'll we'll split up the tasks according to student interest. Um, other times everybody works on lots of things. It really depends on the uh, the students who are who are joining us on the team. Um, a little bit about um, expectations, more practically speaking, um, we generally have about thirty five hours a week of paid work for all of the peer, adv peer advisors total. So we divide that by the number of peer advisors we have, which varies a little bit each year, uh, some between four and seven a year. And when there's seven of you, um, that means that you know, you're averaging about five hours of work a week. Um, when there's fewer, there's, there's more hours of work per week, but that's a rough estimate. Um, the position is paid uh, at the prevailing rate that BC pays undergraduate workers, which I think is around $14 an hour or something like that. Um, whatever BC sets that rate is, is what it is. And um, let's see, we're looking for people who are interested in investing in the IS program and making it a special place to be. Um, I think that the IS program is really special at BC. Uh, it's mid-sized, so it's large enough to where there's lots of new people to meet. Uh, but it's small enough to where you you really can dig in and get a lot uh, out of it by meeting faculty and other students and being a part of uh, creating the kinds of events that you want to do. Um, so I want to turn it over to um, a couple peer advisors to talk about their maybe maybe say the favorite part of the job or something that you've that you've felt was meaningful this year in the work you've done as a peer advisor and any um, any guidance you have for future peer advisors. And then we'll open for any questions that people have. Um, why don't I call on people as I see you in the grid here. Um, Laura, can you get us started? Introduce yourself and uh, say a little bit about what uh, what you've enjoyed about being a peer advisor or some of the challenges you faced, whatever, whatever you'd like to share. 
Yeah. Um, okay. So I am, my name is Laura. I'm a senior in PEDS and then I have a minor in finance. Um, I'm originally from Southern California um, and I went abroad for the whole year last year in Rome, Italy. Um, so a big thing that a lot of students will come to me since they can see my bio is to ask me about studying abroad and how to fit in um, with if you have different minors or different majors as well that you combine with IS, how to fit that in with your schedule and also being able to go abroad. Um, one of the main things that I've really enjoyed about it is honestly the like one on one peer advising that I get to do with students and just getting to know who like the new generation of IS students are and getting to hear from, sorry, I'm sorry about those messages, um, about what their plans are. And I also last semester was involved with the global engagement portal, which um, was a really cool project to be involved with. I It was the big golden shipping container that was outside of the library last semester. Um, it's something that Professor Owens and the IS program have been putting together for, I think, around five years now. And so if one of you become peer advisors, you guys can sign on to that project as well. Um, it involves a lot of coordinating and a lot of cool um, experiences that I honestly didn't even expect. But I feel like it was a very rewarding experience, although it was a lot of hard work. Um, but yeah, I feel like that's kind of the main thing that I've enjoyed about being a peer advisor. Terrific. Uh, thanks. Mary. Hi, yeah, I'm Mary. Um, I am an ethics and social justice concentration. Um, I would say that um, I've just enjoyed like finding community in IS. Like I think it was there before, but through the peer advising um, position, I've definitely been able to like help build community. A lot of what I've done has been like the social aspect of things. Um, I worked a lot on the merch, which was an interesting new initiative this year. Um, but I just really enjoyed being behind the scenes with IS and helping to um, create community and find community with the other peer advisors. Great, thanks. Uh, Ziad? Hello, my name is Ziad, um, and I'm actually dual major in international studies and environmental studies. Um, I studied abroad last year in Venice, um, and I've also interned in Singapore. I've done, while my time here at BC, I've done a lot of kind of like research, both on the environmental end and the political end. Um, so a lot of students come to me asking about research. And my favorite part about being peer advisor is really, as Mary said here and Laura as well, being behind the scenes and kind of like getting to know the students. Um, we get a lot of uh, underclassmen in our offers to kind of like get advising about courses, study abroad, um, their plans coming up. Um, so that's very exciting because like it gets me to connect with more students from the IS program. Um, nevertheless, the program in itself is quite small, but not too big as well for it to kind of like get to see everyone. Um, and really like get to know them. So that's what I love about the IS program the most. Um, here, I work mostly on global conversations, but I've also kind of contributed to global citizenship, the portal um, and other projects. Um, the best part about the peer advisor is really work in tandem with each other to on these projects. Um, so whether the newsletter or any other project, um, we both we all contribute to the different things that we have to get done. Great, thanks. Yeah, that's a, um, a helpful reminder to say two things. One is that it's a very much a team uh, of peer advisors. You kind of focus on a couple of things, but everybody pitches in on all of the things as well. Um, so you get to know peer advisors really well, which is a really fun part of the job, I think. And also uh, more practically speaking, I forgot to mention that um, you generally would work in the office for about three hours a week, uh, something like that, three to five, depending on how many people we have. And then you'd usually do an hour or two of work uh, remotely each week doing uh, video calls with um, peer advising or something like that. Others can elaborate on that, but there is time in the office at Connolly House and there is time that's remote as well. Uh, Talia, do you wanna go next? Hi, my name's Talia. I'm in PEDS concentrator as well. 
Um, I was the only junior this year on the team. So it's kind of fun working with all the seniors and, you know, meeting higher degree that I normally wouldn't interact with in my classes. Um, so I didn't study abroad for a semester, but I went abroad in the summer for an internship as well in Dublin. And then I went to Egypt in November for COP27. So my work last semester was in the newsletter. This semester was more in social media. And I think my favorite part is also like really like the community building and like advising aspect. Like I think my favorite event was the welcome event with the freshmen. Like it was just so cute and like happy, like <laughs> made me so happy to see like people are coming in with all these ambitions and goals and they're so happy to hear from you and just like sharing experiences and that really like humanist part of it. And that's, I really enjoy that. So that's been a lot of fun anytime I get to like speak with other students and yeah, it's really, it really is a collaborative um, environment and I loved working with all of you. So I'm very sad to see you guys go. <laughs> Thanks, uh, Talia. Uh, Christina? Yeah, hi, I'm Christina. I'm a senior concentrating in political economy and development studies. Um, last year I was abroad in the south of France um, for the full year. So coming back to BC, it was great being a part of the ISP program. Um, I work mainly on community building and social events, um, and we've planned a bunch of fun activities this year, um, including like a Jeopardy event for how well do you know the world, and we're currently planning a senior send-off dinner, um, which is kind of hopefully a tradition starting from here on out. Um, one thing I definitely love about uh, being a peer advisor is being able to work with students in different grades, um, being able to really collaborate with a bunch of great, like a great group of seniors and junior um, as well, um, and definitely being able to use my creativity as well and creating different events. Um, everyone's very supportive on the team. Um, and if you have an idea, everyone's really willing to help uh, pitch in. So it's really been a great experience so far. Awesome, thanks. And Sophie? Hi, my name's Sophie. I am also a senior and I'm from Chicago, Illinois. This semester, I've mostly worked on career programming events. And I've really enjoyed that because it's a way to meet so many different people from different places in the world and different careers. And it really has expanded personally my like idea of like what I want to do with my life and how many options there are out there. And I also just really enjoy like at the career events, also meeting all of the students, especially the students that are I've seen them come in here for advising before and to just like kind of repeat and like follow up on those relationships is really nice. Okay, this is really terrific. Thanks uh, to all our peer advisors for being here. Um, and there are those who aren't also, but uh, thanks to you guys who are here and sharing all of this. Uh, Kate, do you have any questions or anything that you want to lift up while we're, while you got us here? Um, <clears throat> um, I guess not really so like with the office hours um uh do you like make appointments or is it like walk-in kind of thing uh, for students uh we have we have we schedule peer advisors to cover blocks of the day so that students can walk in without it without a, a, an appointment but students can also make an appointment with any of the peer advisors using a link that we have on the web page um, so that you can schedule that outside of those hours or any time that's convenient for both people. So there's a there's a measure of both. We want to have a space where people can just walk by, but also uh, the ability to connect with them. And we okay, would, cool. you know, we we try to piece together from all the applications we get from peer advisors. We piece together, uh, you know, a, a diverse group of students that have different backgrounds, different experiences, different interests, different concentrations. Um, and your schedule is our sort of last thing. We don't really, it's not really determinative of whether you get hired as to whether you're available on Monday or Tuesday or something like that. You should pick your classes okay. however you want. But together we do work out, we, we do try to work out a schedule where we have good coverage across the week so that there's people available to, to help at different times and, and things like that. So we'll want to know your fall schedule. But that's when you apply, but that's not going to um, like decide whether you're hired or not. It just helps us piece together things. The other thing I'll mention is that it's really helpful when we know from applicants um, what kind of other interests or skills you bring with you. 
if you are a creative person and you love doing design work, then that's helpful to know. Or if you are someone who loves research and writing or loves really loves kind of doing project oriented work that helps, you know, helps us understand our students better or our alumni better or something like that. That's cool. If you're really, really if you're really invested in um, in uh, looking at career pathways or things like that. Those are all, you know, all those are, are really great things to know. But if you have particular skill sets, web design or, or anything like that, or, or your language skills, we like knowing that also uh, just to help, again, piece together a group of people with different kinds of skill sets and different interests so that we have a wide range on our team here for, to serve as mentors and also, you know, program assistants to do the work. Cool, yeah. I basically, I might, you kind of just answered my other question. I was just going to ask, like, are there any skills or something that I should like, that would be good for me to like emphasize in a um, cover letter or something like that, but you can answer that, so. Yeah, do any of the other peer advisors want to pitch in on that, on useful skills? Was MailChimp mentioned? Uh, Talia, are you capable now of taking over or at least helping other people? Figure out the yeah, right. Of the because <clears throat> we do have to sort of carry over legacy projects. So, you know, we had people who knew Mailchimp last year, and they were able to, uh, you know, train the students that we have here this year. But we have to make sure mm -hmm. ongoing. So yeah, there are skill sets that that do matter. Um, uh, do we still keep a, a social media like you'd mentioned this? Um, but do we still have the Instagram running? Or oh yeah, Talia has been um lighting that up the past few weeks and past few months and everybody together was kind of rotating in the fall um yeah they've done all kinds of creative stuff on uh, social media this year does do you guys want to speak to that about the takeovers and the uh and the uh, stuff from abroad and q a sessions and all that stuff yeah i think like you know at the beginning of each semester we kind of talk as a group is like how we want to break things up if we want to rotate or everyone sticks to one thing. And I think in general this time we decided to everyone sticks to one thing but um, yeah so I know like I know you're a creative person and you have a lot of energy and stuff like that so like that's something you should definitely highlight in your cover letter and whatever and you know like if you're good at or for example you're you're good at like research and like excel and stuff like that like we we kind of have a need for all sorts of like qualitative quantitative work so just highlight whatever you're good at mm -hmm. anyone else want to speak on the skill stuff i would also kind of highlight maybe instances where you've been an advice giver or have been problem solving um, because definitely a large part of the job is being able to um, give advice to underclassmen who might be looking into study abroad or just want advice on courses. Um, so I think that also might strengthen your application. Yeah, I'd like to emphasize on that front that you receive, uh, you go through uh, an hour, hour and a half of what we call a, the a, a advising boot camp uh, early in the semester in the fall, uh, like in August, September, um, where I'll be meeting, you'll be joining international studies faculty and our staff and peer advisors on a conversation about requirements for the major so your job as a peer advisor isn't merely to be friendly with people and to kind of chit chat about stuff but also to have well-informed um, answers to questions about can i double count this or can i double major or how do i deal with x or y question and there will always be things you need to ask professor macazado or myself about or Ms. Joyce to get sort of formal final answers on things. But 80% of the questions at least can be answered by you guys once you're well familiarized with the rules and the way things count or don't count. So we'll have a training session on that for peer advisors so that they um, are you know, up to speed on it and you don't have to feel anxious about it. It gets more uh, familiar as you do more of the advising. Does anyone want to speak to those issues about answering peer advisor type questions about actual academic advising. I can say something. Um, I mean, for the most part, like Professor Owen said, like we have a boot camp at the beginning and there's like a spreadsheet we refer to with all the classes, all the requirements and everything, if you were to forget something on the spot. And mostly that's what students, uh, sometimes they'll come to you with like actual questions 
like, oh, like how many my um, electives do I have to take or does this count towards my concentration? But for the most part, I feel like they're looking for more like uh, like qualitative advice. Like they want to know, like, did you like this class? Like, is this professor good if I want a career in this? Like, did you study abroad? Should I study abroad? Like what programs should I do? So it's not anything to like worry about, I would say. And if you had something that you didn't, know the answer to like you will have six other peers that can answer it and if they can't then Professor Owens and uh, Professor Nakazato are always easy to reach. Yeah we have a slack going so like usually if I don't know something I'll just like type it in and either Professor Owens, Nakazato or anyone whoever's fastest like usually get a response within minutes you know what I mean it's super easy to just you know either tell the person like while you're still meeting with them or just shoot them a quick e email after like it's very easy to like talk to everyone. We're always like working together on Slack. So it's, I'm, I'm never worried of like giving someone the wrong answer because I just ask someone else and they can always help someone out, so. Okay, good. So we've talked about um, the, a little bit about the peer advising primary job of talking to other students and what that involves. Um, we've talked about the newsletter, and the some of the other projects, global conversations, the global engagement portal, global citizenship. Uh, we talked about social media and career stuff and um, community building stuff. I think that covers really the bulk of what peer advisors do. And um, you know, and, and I said early on at the outset that the peer advisors are a really, really important group of leaders in the program. They help to set the tone for what happens over the course of the year. They provide really important. Uh, feedback loops for Professor Nakazato and I to hear how things are going and what questions students have about things we've put out in the newsletter or things like that. There's a, you're a really important group of people, both communicating to faculty and staff and alumni, but also being a, a mentor around uh, campus. Um, so we, have, we invest a lot of time uh, working with peer advisors. We spend a lot of time together on a weekly meeting and uh, for social events and things like that as well. And so it's a you know, good opportunity to get to know each other. And, and uh, I think it's a, I hope that it's a super rewarding um, thing for students to be doing over the course of the year. Um, it's really rewarding for me to work with peer advisors every year. It's a really meaningful part of what we do. And um, so I'm grateful for the opportunity to work with them, with you who are here and with them who I've worked with in the past. So that's great. Any last questions or comments before we, before we sign off? Okay. Awesome. Yes, okay. Thanks so much for coming. Thanks to you who are watching uh, uh, after the fact. Um, applications are due on Tuesday, end of day. That's uh, April 25th, I think maybe. Um, we'll have another reminder in the newsletter on Monday and then we'll take applications and we'll start uh, talking to people with interviews. Uh, after that and uh, so we're looking forward to hearing from everybody and and working with our new team uh in the in the months ahead thanks everybody have a great week bye